Hello friends, so today we're going to discuss the problem B from Educational Code Forces Round 92, problem name Array Walk. So you are given an array A1 to AN which are all positive integers. So now you are initially standing at index 1 and you have a score of A1. So you are standing on the first value and you have taken the first value to be your value of the total score. Now you can do two kinds of moves. You can either move right or you can either move left. Okay, so if you move like right, you will take the right element as and add it to your score. If you move to the left, you can add ax to your score, which is the left value. But you can only move if you are within the bounds. Like you cannot go, so you can only move right if there is some right more element. You can only move left if there are some more element on the left. Okay, you have to perform exactly key moves. Okay, you can only move k times and also there should be no more than z moves to the left so what you can what this means that if you are on the first value you can move like one step on the right then again on the right now you can move again to the left but you cannot move more than z move to the left so like if z is like 2 you if you are on some value you can at move at most two values back okay you cannot move three values consecutively back Okay, now you want to find out the maximum score you can achieve. Okay, so looking at this problem, I think that it can be solved using some greedy approach or if not, then we use some DP approach. Okay, so first take a look on some example. So the question is given that you start at 1, you take the first value. Because Z is 0, you cannot move to the left. Z is this value, you cannot move to the left and you can only move to the right. So you can move four steps to the right. You can move one, two, three, four. So you can cover up all the elements. And the total score is the addition of thus all the elements, which is A1, A2 till A5. The answer is 50. Now you can move at most one step back or left back. So what you can see that you can start with one. You can take the first element, then the second element, third element. Then you can move back. You can move to this step. 5 but you cannot move one more step back you can then go one more step to the right which is 4 so the total is 1 2 3 then again 2 and 3 so the total is 90 so what we are actually doing here is we will at every step that whether it is beneficial to move back or forward it is not greedy because at every step if we check that this is greater I should move back it is not beneficial because it might also happen that there is some very large number, 100, after like 4 steps. And we are at this step. I can either move back or 2 steps ahead. But this seems good for me because it is 5. And this is 3, just smaller. So for beneficial, I move back. If in a greedy move, I will move back. But in a DP move, I, can, I will check all the possible sort of scenarios. Because this is one more 100 there. And if there is 100 there, then it is not beneficial. So now it clears us that we we should need a not a greedy but a DP approach. As you have seen at time limit exceed, I will tell you how to solve this question using both recursive and memoization. So how memoization will increase the speed. One more thing you have to see in this question is the constraint. Because as you can see, Z, which is the maximum you move, you can move back, is the minimum of 5 and k, which means that if k is like 100, if you can move 100 step right. Then, if you do a minimum of 500, it is just 5, which means that z can be maxed from 0 till 5. Okay, if k is like a large value, then also the, the z is a very small value. It can be maximum up to 5. This is a very thing, increasing or like interesting thing you have to note that z cannot be very large. You cannot move a very large number to the back. Okay, you can move at most 5 in the given questions or in the given constraints. Okay, so. Let's see what the question statement states are. At every at every point, we have two options. I can either move right or move left. So we will take this example only to make it more clear. Okay. So now what you can see that if I start from this, I will always take this first value because this first value is always there in our total score. Now I will move to the second value or I will start from the second value. Now. I have some values which is k, how many moves I can do and z, how many back moves I can do. Okay, so now what you can see, 
at every position i have two option i can move backward or i can move forward if i can move forward then k subtracts by 1 if i move backward then z also subtract by 1 and k also subtract by 1 because if i also move back i move is taken i have moved one way and thus k will also subtract so z will only subtract if we have taken one step back and we will keep on subtracting z till either we go out of bound or we we don't have much more z left and also for the same we can keep on going more right until there is some k left or we don't go out of bound i hope you understand both of these conditions so what you can do you have three value which is i which will keep track of the current value on which you are k which will tell you uh, how many moves you still have to move and z which will tell you how many back moves you can do you can now write a recursive solution in which you will start from this position and at every state you will take this take this number and then you have the following conditions you can move here or you can move here okay and then you can again do the same because now i is at this point you will find out what is the maximum state if i go from this to the if i go from this to this right or if i go to the left what will give us the maximum answer i will take down to your code to make it more clear how i write this recursive solution now this is a solve function which will take the input of n k and z i have made the long long vector for storing the all the uh, values of all the scores now this ok function is a recursive function I, x stores the total score the total score is will start from the index 1 okay and we will pass out the a vector k and z and also we will add a of 0 to the answer because this this is value this value is like always there in the answer and we will return x now as you can see the ok function will take the input of a i i will denotes the what is the index on which we are k k because i am sending k and there is also global k so i have made this k k and z z to make it just uh, you can name it any uh, according to your your need now what is the base condition the base condition is if k becomes zero k k which means that i cannot move any further or the i if i go out of bounds then which means that if i become greater than equal to n or less than zero then we go out of bound in both of these condition we turn zero because we don't have any more steps to do else we have two steps so for both of the steps i have written down a value function and we have two answers if we can go right we will check that if we can go right which means that if i is less than n what we will do value stores the max value stores the maximum of itself and we will store the current value and we will recursively call this function again for because i have taken the ith value if as we have seen if i am on this point i have two options i can either go right or left if i can go right we will check that there there should be some more element there like i i can go right okay then i will take this element and we will go right and if i take this element i will add this element a of i to our answer to the value and we will recursively call this function again increasing the ith value and k or the number of moves will decrease by 1 and zz will remain same because i haven't moved right left else what we will do we can move left we can only move left by two conditions if there is some left element and if zz we have some zz available then what we will do we can move to the left at this point now our pointer which which will store on which element we are will move to the left and it will decrease by 1 which is i minus 1 because we have done a move k will also decrease and zz will also decrease and whatever is the recursive value on answer for this we will return the value and that's the recursive i always like uh, stress that my subscriber should write some recursive value before or think of, of some recursive solution for dumb dp question okay now if you submit this code then it will give clearly because this is a recursive solution now we can increase its speed using memoization so now how we will do to convert this thing into memoization code you just have to see two three lines of code and it will become or it will convert to a memoize code now you will first see what are the things on which this recursive solution depend 
what is the thing or what is the uh, value we can pre-compute because in this ok function what values changes as you can say a remains same the vector value remains same k k minus 1 is decreased in both of the in both of the conditions this value is subtracted by 1 in both the cases which means that this is not changing but as you can see zz is changing and i is changing because these two values will define a particular state we can use these two values to define our state in the deep memoization i will go as you can see i which defines the total size will go from 2 to 10 to the power 5 and z will go from 0 till 5 so what you can do you can make a db table in which which will help us to do the memoization you can make a long long db table and for the first value we'll store the i value because it's at 10 to the power 5 10 3 4 5 add 2 for like a buffer and also it's it is for 5 we can add up to 6 i'm just adding one two values for a buffer it is it it is up to 10 over 5 and it is just 5 okay now what we'll do we will check that whether we have calculated this value earlier or not if we have calculated this value earlier then we will just return that value so the state is defined by i and zz if this particular state of i and zz is not equal to minus 1 which means that we have calculated it before we will return this state value which is return dp of i and zz okay now and after and also while we are returning before returning what we will do we will store this state value in this dp table and then we will return okay and also one more thing we have to do because we have to initialize it with minus one because we will check that whether our dp table is having minus one which means that we haven't calculated this state before so we have to first also initialize our dp table with minus one what you can do you can just mem set it mem set dp minus one and size of dp that's it these four lines of code is used to make this recursive solution to a to to a to be having memoization in it. I hope you understand the code as well as the logic. This code is fine, which is having memorization. If you still have any doubts, please mention down. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Keep coding. Bye.